Hello, kids. Welcome back. Okay. Uh, 5-7. Applying the fundamental theorem of algebra. Fundamental theorem of algebra. It is an algebra. Finding the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay. So, here's the deal. We have solved four equations with polynomial factors. We've solved with quadratics where we say, what are the zeros? Find them. Okay. Well, we've not solved for ones where they have repeated zeros. We're going to talk about that today. What happens when they have repeated zeros? Well, we have to have some common sense and go from there. What happens when they have imaginary solutions? We're going to talk about that today. Okay? So we're going to take it a little bit further. Um, how do I know how many solutions this equation right here would have that says x cubed minus 5x squared minus 8x three. plus 48? Because of the 3. So there are 3 solutions. Okay? Whether those are real or imaginary or whether they're repeated, I don't know. Now, they do show us when it factors, it factors out to x plus 3, x minus 4 squared. Which means that I get x minus 3 and I get x equals uh, 4. Well, as negative 3 and 4 as distinct factors, you would end, end up solving. Um, but which means you have a repeated answer of 4. 4 happens twice. <coughs> When we go to do, like, list all the possible zeros and we go to do all that stuff now, you know, using the synthetic division, you might have to use the same answer more than once, okay, to get it down to where you need to be because there can be repeated answers. Okay. On part A, how many zeros does this equation have? x cubed plus 5x squared plus 4x plus 20. Three. Three. So A has three solutions. Okay, A has three solutions. How can you figure out what the three are on that? Okay, group. What can I take out of here? X squared. X squared, leaving you with X plus five. What can you take out of here? Four, leaving you with x plus five. So I have x squared minus or plus four, and I have x plus five. Yes. Now, what are my zeros? Uh, negative four, negative five. Okay, it's x squared equals negative four, which means x would equal what? No. Plus or minus 2i. And then x equals how many solutions do you have there? How many? Three. Negative 2i, positive 2i, negative 5. Anytime, anytime that you have an imaginary solution, you will always have the positive and the negative of it, period. It cannot go without its friend. It has to have both, the positive and the negative, which means in your homework, when they say, here are the zeros of something, tell me what the equation is, like we've done in the past. Remember, they said uh, the zeros are 3 and 5. Tell me what the equation is. So you say x minus 3 times x minus 5, and you FOIL. Okay? We're going to do that later with imaginary numbers and with radicals. When they say the zeros of your function are 3 and negative 2i, what they're not telling you is 2i is also a zero. You have to recognize that and make an equation that says x minus 3, x minus 2i, x plus 2i, and then factor it. Okay? We're going to get there. Okay, find the zeros of the polynomial function. How many zeros are there? Five. How do I find it on this function? No, you have to set it equal to zero. No. Oh, you have to prove it. Can you do it? No. I can do synthetic division, which means I have to oh, do yeah. first what first? You have to. Please excuse this interruption. Saida and Karen Lewis, please come to the front office. So you have to take the constant, and you have to take the leading coefficient, and you have to find all the possible zeros. 
So I need to take 14 <laughs> over 1, right? What are the factors of 14? 2, 1, 1, 2, 2 7, 14. And since it's over 1, I can just put that. So all of my, pos all of my possible zeros are 1, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, plus or minus 14. How do you solve from there? You have to use uh, one of those numbers. Uh, the synthetic division. Mm -hmm. I pick two. So I say one, negative four, four, one, negative four, four, ten, negative thirteen, negative fourteen, right? What number do you want to try? Negative two. One times negative two. Gives you negative six. Negative six wow. times wow. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, that's a hard. Oh, Can you do positive two? gives you negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Uh, 4 plus 4 is 0. <laughs> 8 times 2 is what? 16. 16. That's not the answer, kids. You're the one that wanted to try it. <laughs> Can we do? It's, you, 2 should work. Oh, I was right. Well, let's keep on trying. So then 26. 26 times 2. Why is this happening? I don't think we added it. No, it's supposed to. Uh, what? Because ah, two yes, times negative it. two is negative four. That's why I said zero. Duh. And I already figured that out. You're slow. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> so this is negative four. This is zero. This becomes zero. This becomes ten, right? Ten times two is twenty. What's twenty minus thirteen? positive 7. 7 times 2 is 14, oh. which gives me a 0. But that only takes me down to what power? Third. Fifth, fourth. 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 So I have to do it, do it again. again. Oh. Now what? Oh. What? Two. We just did two. Oh. One. Oh. one and one is one. one. Negative one. Negative one and one, one is one. negative one. one. Negative 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 one. <laughs> What's so negative three times negative Miguel one? Miguel Ringer. Thank you. What's three, three zero? Three times three negative one? Negative three. Negative three. Negative three. Which seven. gives you seven, seven. Which gives you? Oh my so it is zero. Oh now that only takes you down to? Third power. Third, so you have to do it again. Mother! Teresa! I'm going to tell you, I would repeat one of those. Two! Negative one. <laughs> well, so you get negative four, you get four, you get seven, you get negative seven, you get zero. So, so far you have x uh, plus one squared, x minus two, and then you have x squared minus four x plus seven. Can anything factor to break that apart? X. Plus three x. No. So if it doesn't factor, what do you have to use? Non-factorable. Oh, imaginary. It starts with a Q. Quotient. No. What formula do you have to use? What are formula? Opposite of B plus or minus square root of B squared minus square root of B
So all over <coughs> two times one. So I get four plus or minus the square root of 16. What's negative four times seven? Negative 28. 28. <coughs> over two. Now. 16 minus 28 equals What is 16 minus 28? Negative eight. How about negative 12? Now, how do you take the square root of negative 12? And what else? You can't put it in your calculator. It will say domain error. Domain. Four. Domain. Three. Domain. Guys, focus. You're back in school. How do I figure out what I can take out of 12? If, I, if there's anything I can take out of it. Ah, uh, four and three. Four and three, and four is two and two, so you take out a two what? Radical three. A two I. So this changes to four plus or minus two I radical three over two. Now, this reduces to two. This reduces to I. Okay, so my solutions are as follows. I have um, two as a solution. I have negative one, negative one, right, because I had it twice. And I have two plus I radical three, and I have two minus I radical three. How many solutions do I have? Five. How many am I supposed to have? Five. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, now. Here is a key thing that you need to know. There's a lot of reading here, I'll break it down. So basically when we have quadratic functions, if they have an odd power, okay, an odd power, then the graph crosses the x axis at whatever that k is. So if it says x minus three, it's gonna cross through positive three, okay? So when it's an odd power, it crosses. So here, this is, would be an odd power, it crosses through that two as a solution. When it is an even power, it does something where we like to call it that it's tangent to, but we call it that it bounces, it bounces away. So what happens is if it's an even power, it's gonna come up here to the solution point and then it's going to make a turn, it's going to bounce, okay? So if it's an even power, it bounces. If it's an odd power, it goes through it. Okay, the solutions go through on odd powers, they bounce on even powers. Complex conjugates is the last thing we're going to talk about today. Okay, a complex conjugate is like when I have a plus bi, or I have 3 minus radical 2, or anything like that. That's a complex conjugate. We're going to talk about what that looks like when we're factoring. Okay. So here it says, write a polynomial function of least degree that has the rational coefficients, um, a leading coefficient of one, and three as two plus radical five as zeros. So in order to do this, I need to set up parentheses and I need to FOIL. Okay, so if three is a solution, how do I set that up in parentheses? X plus three. Nope. X minus three. X minus three. How do you set up 2 plus radical 5 in parentheses? Um, You're going to say bracket, Whoa, bracket. parenthesis x uh, minus, right? Because if it says it's positive, then it's negative, right? Okay, so x, so I'm going to set it up with brackets first. And then I'm going to say x minus 2 plus radical 5, and then remember I told you this, if you have a radical or you have an imaginary number, you technically have the opposite of that as well. So even though it doesn't show it, there's another zero. The other zero is 2 minus radical 5, okay? So I'm going to set it up like this and say x minus 2 in parentheses minus radical 5, okay? So, I'm going to ignore this first and factor, FOIL this part first. Mm -hmm. What happens when I FOIL x minus 2 times x minus 2? How about x minus 2 squared? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Oh, no. 
No, it's not because you have to because now you have to foil this. Okay. I'm gonna just drop this down here for me. So I don't forget about it. Now, if I multiply x minus two in parentheses times negative radical five, and I multiply positive radical five times x minus two in parentheses, what's gonna happen with those? So I'm not even gonna do it. They're gonna cancel. I don't even know need to worry about that middle part. So now I just need to focus on the end. What is radical five times negative radical five? Radical five squared. Uh-huh. Well, yes. There's nothing. Which the radical and the square would cancel out, leaving you with five. Not five. Five odd. Look, what sign? Negative five. Negative five. So now you have this. Now we need to foil this. This gives you x squared, right? Yeah. This gives you negative 2x. This gives you negative 2x, making negative 4x. This gives you positive 4 minus 5. So now I have this. So I combine like terms, and I basically have x squared minus 4x minus 1. So now I have x minus 3 plus you times x squared minus 4x minus 1. Okay? Now, from there, I now get to distribute this part in, foil this part in. So you get x cubed, negative 4x squared, negative x, negative 3x squared, 12x, 3. Combine like terms. x cubed minus 7x squared plus 11x plus 3. Just figuring it out when you factor. Okay? That's where we're stopping. That's what you're working on on your homework. It is all on the board.